Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, and I don't like to do these videos, thankfully I, I don't do them that often, but I actually didn't even know about this until probably five minutes ago when I saw someone posted it to the Room 237 Facebook page. But it's time to do yet another tribute video to a life lost because today, uh, uh, July 6, 2020, we lost one of the world's most prolific and my favorite music composer, Ennio, Ennio Morricone. This man has been so influential and has had so many television, movie credits. I mean, he has over 400 you know, film and television credits. He's scored over a hundred classical works. I mean, the guy is known for just about everything between the 60s and present. Um, he, he was 91 years old and he didn't die of natural causes. He, I guess recently, um, I didn't find it on here, but he sustained some sort of fall and his death was a, the result of complications from that. Born, he was born in Rome, November 10th, 1928, and he passed away in Rome. And it's sad. He was known for playing the trumpet and the piano, and he was active since 1946. So, I mean... Spanning almost seven and a half decades is how long his career was. I mean, oh, oh, let's look at some, some of his uh, uh, accolades. He, he got the honorary Oscar award. He was nominated for six Oscars. In 2016, he received his only Oscar score for the Hateful Eight. At that time, he was the oldest person to win a competitive Oscar. He's won three Grammys, three Golden Globes, six BAFTAs, ten David D. Donatello Awards, eleven Nastro D'Argento's, two European Film Awards, the Golden Lion Honorary Award, and the Polar Music Prize in 2010. And he has gone on to influence people such as Hans Zimmer, another one of my favorites, Danger Mouse, Dire Straits, Muse, Metallica, and Radiohead. By 2016, he had sold over 70 million records. And, I mean, just to name a few, I, first of all, his scores are very memorable. They all have a distinct sound, like he... I don't know how to explain his signature sound, but arguably his biggest score is um, The Ecstasy of Gold from Good and Bad and the Ugly, which is, um, I believe that's like the wah, 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 it just the, keeps building up. Even with uh, filmmakers like John Carpenter, who who is known to compose his, his own films, but uh, Morricone has worked with him. He's worked with Tarantino. The guy's been everywhere and done everything. He's mostly known for westerns, spaghetti westerns, and horror and giallo films, which is where I know him from. And. Whether I hear a score during the opening credits, and I'm like, that kind of sounds like Morricone. But, and then, you know, the credits will be like music by Ennio Morricone. I'm like, ah, I knew it. And <clears throat> he is, he's also done scores for very high profile and politically driven films. Like Sallow, The 120 Days of Sodom. He scored that. I mean, what more can I say other than just talk about some of his most memorable 
I mean, just directors that I respect and am a fan of that he's worked with. Brian De Palma, Barry Levinson sounds familiar, Oliver Stone, John Carpenter, Quentin Tarantino. I mean, he wrote his first composition when he was six years old. It was a classical piece. He started going to, you know, like a, a musical school at age 12. He went in to play the trumpet. And he was greatly influenced by this one teacher named Gioffredo, Gioffredo Petrassi. And a lot of his concert pieces have been uh, dedicated to him. He's also written operas. He got his diploma in the trumpet in 1946. His diploma for the trumpet was a mark of 9 out of 10 in 1952. Wow. First compositions. He started composing for radio, television, and more popular arts. I think like stage work. But, of course, film, where he really got discovered. And let's see, what, what was his first... Uh, Death of a Friend, Italian drama directed by Franco Rossi. He, he was the conductor for someone else's score. But his first real debut as the composer was a film called The Fascist in 1961. And he says his first films were light comedies. But I think he really rose, and then it's all broken up into genres. I mean, comedies. Is there any I know? I don't really know any of these comedies. A lot of them are Italian. Of course, um, westerns. Especially westerns by Sergio Leone, like his, um, like the Fistful of Dollars trilogy. His Once Upon a Time trilogy, which one, Once Upon a Time in America is one of my absolute favorite gangster flicks. Very beautiful, depressing score. I mean, there is the piccolo main theme, but that one towards the end, that really open, sad, beautiful piece from Once Upon a Time in America is one of my favorite pieces by him. I'm not going to click play because uh, I don't want to get copyright straight. Yeah, Ecstasy of Gold became one of his best known compositions. Oh no, the Ecstasy of Gold was the opening of Jackass number two. It was in that film, but Ecstasy of Gold is not the wah, wah, wah. And Metallica has used it since 83 for their. Uh, opening. Fistful of Dynamite, My Name is Nobody, Once Upon a Time in America, which at that time uh, Sergio Leone had passed away. Other westerns, dra dramas and political films. I mean, just some directors. M Marco, uh, Marco Bellicchio, Gio, um, Ponte Corvo, oh, I'm stuttering reading these. Roberto Fonza, uh, Giuseppe Petroni Griffi, Umberto Lenzi, okay, I do know him. He wrote, did the music for Almost Human. Pier Paolo Pasolini's Sallow, 120 Days of Sodom. But of course, I know him most for horror and giallo. That's almost everything I've seen that he's done has been that. So, I mean, he did Dario, Dario Argento's Animal Trilogy, Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Cat of Nine Tails, and Four Flies on Grey Velvet. But he also did Argento's uh, Standall Syndrome, Phantom of the Opera. He did Nightmare Castle, which I... Or am I thinking of Horror Express? It was a movie from the 60s. I think that's one with Christopher Lee. Nope. 
It doesn't have Christopher Lee or Peter Cushing. I was thinking of uh, Horror Express. I gotta scroll all the fucking way back down there. Excuse me. Bear with me. <clears throat> um, A Quiet Place in the Country, 60s film, In the Christ, Autopsy, Night Train Murders. Okay. The song I like from Night Train Murders, which is A Flower Is All You Need, but the music sounds like something Ennio Morricone would have done. Other Giallo films, Forbidden Photos of, of a Lady Above Suspicion, Lizard in a Woman's Skin, which is a Fulci film, Cold Eyes of Fear, The Fifth Chord, Short Night of Glass Dolls, My Dear Killer, What Have You Done to Solange, Black Belly of the Tarantula, Who Saw Her Die in Spasmo, He did films that are not really that great, but, you know, he did The Exorcist 2. Um, which, my favorite, uh, a lot of people think he did uh, Cannibal Holocaust, which does sound l l like a Morricone score, which... I think the main theme to Cannibal Holocaust was Ritz Orlani, but I could have swore he did do Cannibal Holocaust like the rest of the music. Maybe not. Lots of Oscar uh, nominated films. Uh, hold on. This one. He did do a song for Django, Django Unchained, which I think he did work on the original Django series. Television and final works. All right, let's see if I can just get discography here. Oh, soundtrack albums, 520. Damn. Selected films. All okay. right. Whoa, that's not what I wanted at all. Television films, filmography. Here we go. Yeah, this is quite the fucking list. <laughs> wow. Okay, he didn't do Cannibal Holocaust for a second. I knew a, a, a Rich Ortani did the main theme, but for some reason I thought he did the other music. My favorite piece, or pieces, that, that Ennio Morricone had done, I can't remember the name of one of them. I just can't. The other one is called Bestiality. They're both pieces from John Carpenter's The Thing, which were not used but would go on to be in The Hateful Eight. Uh, bestiality is the part where we know the coffee's poisoned and we're watching everyone kind of do their thing, drinking coffee, waiting for it to hit. And we just get that buildup of the, like the, bum, 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 ba -da -da -dum, bum, 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 ba -da -da -dum, dun, 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 just keeps building up. Which would have to be my favorite scene where no, like, my most beautiful, favorite orchestrated scene, where there's no dialogue, it's just visual and music that go together to just tell what the scene is doing. That is my favorite. The other one, which, if it was in the thing, it was going to be during the part where uh, McCready's doing his blood test, which I think would have worked as well. The other piece that was from the thing... That's one of my favorite pieces of his that wasn't used but later was in uh, Hateful Eight was when um, Samuel Jackson is shooting everyone and then he goes to shoot Daisy and he's out of bullets and he realizes it. But even the, the opening title for the Hateful Eight, that's Ennio Morricone. That's one of my favorite main themes that he's done. You know, all of his films have a very... A very Italian sound to it, which makes sense because he is Italian. I'm just kind of looking through his 
Um, he also did the Untouchables. Bugsy, that's the one that Barry Levinson did. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of scrolling through his filmography now. Oh, there's a film called Who Killed Pasolini? Okay, Stendhal Syndrome. Phantom of the Opera. 98 by Dario Argento. Which I heard was not a very good film. Uh, <clears throat> just a very talented guy. I mean, for Hateful Eight, he won Academy Award, ASCAP, BAFTA, Golden Globe, and he was nominated for a Grammy and a Saturn Award. His last film credit was The Correspondence from 2016. I mean, for a guy whose career has spanned seven and a half decades, at least since he's been active in music, if we're talking 61 to now, almost seven decades. Six decades. 59 years, wow. With that many credits, I mean, over 400 film and television credits. All his scores sound different, <clears throat> excuse me, yet. They all sound different, yet you can tell it's him. That's the sign of a talented person with a signature. And I mean, just on top of my head and from what I remember on here, I mean, Once Upon a Time in America... His pieces from that was going to be in the thing, but went on to be in the Hateful Eight. Uh, you know, is a name that whenever I see come up on the opening credits, I always think this is going to be a great score. This is, uh, I know I'm going to like the music to this, and he influenced so many people, like Hans Zimmer. It didn't mention it, but I'm sure he influenced people like John Williams as well. Maybe. I'm, I'm sure he's one of those people that even though I didn't list everyone, I'm sure everyone has a little bit of Morricone in them. Just because of how prolific the guy is. I mean, he, he will be missed. N no one really has that kind of profile, that, that kind of sound. I mean, that's really what... If anyone who's not making an Italian film or an Italian film that's supposed to feel like a, an American film, like a, like, <clears throat> he's the guy to get, like, spaghetti westerns. He just, I, I can't hear Morricone without thinking of spaghetti westerns, giallos, regular westerns, some horror films. Definitely my favorite composer. I mean, my favorite piece has to be the bestiality one. The Poison Coffee music from Hateful Eight. It's sad that Carpenter didn't use them for the thing. Yes, Carpenter did want more of like a subtle score. <clears throat> Which, I mean, it did work out better. Not to say his music would not have worked, but I think that those pieces work better in Hateful Eight. I know this hasn't been very informative, like my... Um, my tribute to Terry Jones, but cause I didn't really know that much about the guy, to be honest, other than just what pieces were in what films, but yeah, he, he is my favorite composer, and I mean, the guy lived to be 91, L more, w well over half his life was his very illustrious career. He got to work with all of the major people throughout the generations. One of the most sought after composers, pro, one of the most prolific, influential, legendary, Ennio Morricone, rest in peace, you will be missed.